Welcome back to the Lights Out Podcast, bedtime stories for boys and girls around the world. Good evening, boys and girls. Are you ready for bed? Are you all snuggled up and ready for the Lights Out bedtime story? Good, because you're in for a treat tonight with book four of Mr. Men by Roger Hargreaves. And tonight's Mr. Men story is called Mr. Nosy. And a big shout out goes to all the fans that keep following and listening and liking and sharing. I still cannot believe that after just two short years, this show has over 500 episodes and gets listened to by children around the world about 25,000 times a month. And if that wasn't motivation enough, I don't know what is. But we're well on our way to a thousand ad-free stories forever for boys and girls around the world. But back to the story, because it's all about the story. And this one is Mr. Men number four by Roger Hargreaves, Mr. Nosy. Mr. Nosy liked to know about everything that was going on. He was always poking his nose into other people's business. Mr. Nosy was the sort of person who, if they came upon a locked door, couldn't resist looking through the keyhole to see why the door had been locked. Mr. Nosy was the sort of person who, if he found an unopened letter addressed to somebody else, would simply have to open it to find out what was inside. Mr. Nosy was a sort of person who, if he was sitting reading his paper on a train, would much rather read the paper of the person sitting next to him. Naturally, as you might well imagine, Mr. Nosy was not very popular People did not like the way in which Mr. Nosy would peek and pry into their affairs. They did not like it at all. But did that stop Mr. Nosy peeking and praying? It did not. Mr. Nosy lived in a funny, tall, thin house in a place called Tiddletown. The people of Tiddletown decided that Mr. Nosy was becoming much too nosy, and so they held a meeting to discuss what to do about him. We must find some way of stopping him being so nosy, said old Mr. Chips, the town carpenter. That's right, said Mrs. Washer, who ran the Tiddletown laundry. He needs to be taught a lesson. If we could only think of a way to stop him poking his nose into everything, said Mr. Bush, the painter. And then a small smile spread over his face. Listen, he said, now grinning, I have a plan. All his friends gathered round to listen to his plan. The following morning, Mr. Nosey was out walking along Tiddletown High Street, when he heard somebody whistling behind one of the closed doors. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself, and tiptoeing up to the door quietly, opened it and peeped in. Splash! Went a very wet paintbrush right on the end of Mr. Nose's nose, covering it with bright red paint. Oh dear! I am sorry, said Mr. Brush, who was painting the inside of the door. Poor Mr. Nosy had to go straight home to try and remove the red paint, which was very difficult and rather painful. Mr. Brush chuckled to himself. The plan had begun. The following day, Mr. Nosy was walking past the laundry when he heard somebody laughing on the other side of the wall. 
I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself. And, standing on tiptoe, he looked over the wall. Snap! went a clothes peg right on the end of Mr. Nose's nose. Oh dear, I am sorry, said Mrs. Washer, who was hanging up clothes on the washing line on the other side of the wall. Poor Mr. Nosey. He removed the clothes peg and went off down the street, feeling extremely sorry for himself and for his poor red nose. Mrs. Washer chuckled to herself. The plan was working. The next day, Mr. Nosey was going past the fence when he heard hammering. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself, and creeping very quietly to the end of the fence, he peeped around. Bang! went a hammer right on the end of Mr. Nosey's nose. Oh dear, I am sorry said old Mr. Chips, who was nailing up a loose plank in the fence. Poor Mr. Nosey had to go home immediately and bandage his poor red sore nose. Mr. Chips grinned, a broad grin. The plan was wor working very well indeed. The following day, Mr. Nosey was walking in the woods when he heard somebody sawing wood. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself, and he crept up behind a tree. He was just about to peer out from behind the tree when it suddenly occurred to him that if he did, something very nasty might happen to his nose. And so he went on his way without being nosy. Behind the tree, with a saw raised in his hand, stood Mr. Hurd, the farmer, when he saw that Mr. Nosey had gone on his way without being nosy, he laughed and laughed and laughed. The plan had worked. Mr. Hurd hurried into Tiddletown to tell everybody. The plan really had worked, because after that Mr. Nosey stopped being nosy and soon became very good friends with everybody in Tiddletown. And that is the end of the story. Except to say that if you are ever tempted to be as nosy as Mr. Nosy used to be, you'd better expect one thing. A sore nose. That's right. The end of Mr. Nosy by Roger Hargreaves. That's book four of the Mr. Men books. Here on the Lights Out podcast. Bedtime stories for boys and girls and nosy noses around the world. Good night.